Hello fellow planters. So I'm here at the Lake Bee Recreation Area of the Carolina Sandhills National Wildlife Refuge with my friends Greg, Desiree, and Jaden. And we are coming here to look at pitcher plants in the wild. So we're going down here to this overlook where there's supposedly a pitcher plant bog. And we are going to see if we can spot any pitcher plants. So far, I don't see anything. Looks a little dry. Ow, stepped on something. But let us see. Oh, there's one. Check it out, there's a beautiful Saracenia flava. Very awesome. Cool. Wow, I wish I could go down in here. I don't know if we're allowed to, but this is so cool, so. Anyway, pitcher plant bog, Lake Bee Recreation Area at the Carolina Sandhills National Wildlife Refuge. And there's a beautiful Saracenia flava. And there's, well, there are a couple. Okay, so looking at the Saracenias, my friend Greg looked over to the side. Oh, I just noticed there are some in a little lit area between the trees. And right over here, excuse me. Um, you have several Saracenia purpureas, which are flowering. Look at the nice red top to those flowers. And right over there are some more. Wow, this is so amazing. So looking at this overlook, I believe these are sundews. I'm zooming in with a high-powered scope. And let me... Yeah, you can see the Drosseras. I think they might be... It's hard to tell, but also let me, whoops, I went, hit the focus ring. Let me zoom out, zoom out a little further, whoops. And you can see like a beautiful flava pitcher over here. Right there. And it's like the more I look in this area, the more pitcher plants I see, like you have some back here. If you see behind that tree and then just so you guys get a perspective this is the first one I got to see where is it uh, right there and now going down this bog going down the overlook to where the purpureas are um, we're gonna get some close-ups of those as well uh, let's see You can see the uh, beautiful pictures. Let's get this in focus. Look at those pictures right behind that tree. But if I, okay, where's the tree? If I go down and over, check those out. Wow. And my friend Greg is checking out um, them down there. And I'm, wow, look at this. Oh, there's a spider web on it. But one interesting thing is in this area where the purpureas are, like you can see down here where the pitcher, purple pitcher plant is. Looking at this um, there, you have a bunch of Saracenia flavas, just a nice little patch of them. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, so looking at the Saracenia flavas and then the purpureas that are over here and further down, Look, you have sphagnum moss. So here is some nice sphagnum moss growing in the wild in South Carolina. Here's a close-up of sphagnum moss growing along the edge to the entrance of that little overlook. And let's get a really good close-up of it. So I'm gonna go in, switch, and pull out. Uh, check that out. Let's see 
what this thing ate. She got the hairs on it. Look at that fat picture right there. Wow. Okay, so I came down and this soil is soggy or this ground over here yeah, to get that. some pitcher plants. And looking underneath my feet, I just noticed, look at this, Drosera rotundifolia or capillaris. And there's a bunch of them over here. Wow, and they're really, really wow. red, which means this spot gets a lot of light during the day, even though we're right now in the shade. So let us look at these up close and personal. There's little red plants right there in front of the rock. Wow. Oh my God. See how round the leaves are versus being spatulate like a spatulata would be. But I'm surprised at how red these are. They're just so beautiful. I can't believe I missed them. And my friend Greg, he missed them. Look at this tiny one over here. And look Were at you that one there. Wow, that's a nice <laughs> yeah, specimen. Ain't she a beaut? And right next to, hold it your foot there, Greg. Right next to Greg's foot, there's his shoe. You can see another sundew. Where is it? Uh, right there, you can see it underneath the foliage. Anyway, let's get out of here so we're not going to destroy this beautiful population uh, of sundews. So you see them right it along the like path. The Venus flytrap, right? Yeah, Venus flytraps aren't in this area, but right along the path, there are, oh, I don't see them anymore. Ah, right there. You can see there's a piece of juncus, and right there is another rotunda foli. No, that one, the leaves are not quite as round. That could actually be a capillaris. Considered the other ones, they were really round. These are round with a slight um, extension down the petiole. Oh, take it off. <laughs> And there's something on me. Yeah, so it's a spider. <laughs> but then there's another one right there. I'm about to and then look at this piece. Hair. A nice piece of juncus. And if you see... No, uh, this might be... No, they are this one here. Look, on down there. You can see the juncus uh, in bloom right there. It's so beautiful. Now, one thing that my friend Greg noticed, look how tiny these sundews are. But look, they're actually f um, having flower stalks. It would be nice to find one in bloom that has the flowers opened. Look at that tiny specimen right there. So I'm over by Pool H, and you can see how beautiful it is. I don't really see too much in the way of uh, carnivorous plants, but look at that. Dude, check out the, um, check out the uh, Carolina Kabumba that's all covered in gunk. I used to have these in my aquarium, but right there, you can see the lily pad flower. But yeah, because it's not a seepage, the water, even though it's very tannic, like going down here is why you don't see too many carnivorous plants because there are probably too many dissolved things to support them but this I believe would be the red kabomba because look at the stems and then there's another type of plant there I'm not sure what it is Lily pad. We have the lily pad with the kabomba. So I think the red kabomba is just so dirty, needs cleaning. And 
then you have some juncus over here. And then to the side, sphagnum moss, but no sundews. And this is over to the right of the edge of Pool H from the road. So here's Pool H. And you have this thing, and way down in the distance, there's a turtle. Right under the sign. Let's put it right under the sign. So my point is right up there. Okay, so I'm at the observation deck of the Oxpen Recreation Area and supposedly you can see some pitcher plants around here like a field of them, but I don't see any. You have this little pond here with a ton of lily pad flowers and you have where you can see where they did a controlled burn, at least I'm assuming it was controlled. So maybe they had taken out the pitchers in there, or like not taken out, but that the pitcher plants just need time to recover. But you can see how this area is very like wet and soggy, but I don't see any pitchers here whatsoever. I'm disappointed. I look, there are tons of junkus though. Some, going for it. some bug is enjoying the flower. <laughs> oh yeah, see it moving around. found the best place when the first so over at the oxpen one pond we're still looking for the seepage area where we can spot the field of sarsenia flava but greg came down to the water and look we have a lot of sphagnum moss and guess what's growing among them let me get a good uh, shot right there drosera intermedia so here is Drosera intermedia, unlike the rotundifolia or capillaris we saw earlier. I think it's rotundifolia. You see how these have longer stems and they're a little longer like leaves that are more where the hairs are, more like spatulate. And check that out, there's like a berry or something, either someone spectator dropped or um, rolled off or something. But then you see this little bit of Junkus over here as you get to the water. But yeah, check it out. Tons of um, Drosera intermedia. Okay, let's see if we can get a good shot of here. You can see the intermedia. And. Oops. Oh, look, that one's curled. It's like it caught a fly. Oh, cool. Or a bug, and let's see. Oops, let me zoom out. Check out the little tentacles. Ain't she a beaut? And there we go. This is nice how you see the sundew and the sphagnum underneath. I don't know what these are, but I just got a really good picture of them. No, they're Drosera intermedia. from the Oxpen One Lake, or pond, whatever you want to call this pool, there is a large mass of sphagnum among the grasses. But this section here doesn't seem to harbor as much Drosera intermedia as just a few paces away. Oh, wow. 
So looking at the other side of the Oxpen 1 area, look what I found growing down here. Um, Saracenia. Um, well, that is a small flava over there, but this one, they're probably both flavas, but they could be rubri, rubras, I can't even pronounce, but I'm not sure because the pictures are smaller than what a flava would typically be, but check out all this sphagnum moss as well. So let's go hunting for more pitcher plants. So over there where Greg's taking the picture is where we saw those rubras a moment ago, or flavas. I can't even tell these days, can I? I need to get up close to them. But you see the stripes going down, they could be rubras, except the hood on that one at the lower left of that cluster is not really very rubra-ish is it? because the way the hood is on a rubra is a little different. So these are probably just small young Saracenia flavas versus nice mature ones we saw earlier. And you can see some more, Let me, uh, let's see, you can see some more as I walk along. I don't see any sundews in this sphagnum moss. They only had them there, but um, as we walk along, I saw some. Did I just walk by them? Or I'm just blind? Oh, I did walk by it. Okay, so right over here. Oh, this one does look more like a rubra, but I really can't tell the species. But you see how its uh, meal awaits? It's trying to stay put on the leaf and it just flew off. Like when I try to reach over to focus. Yeah, that is a rubra because look at the shape of the operculum. Well, it's turned around, that makes it difficult. But yeah, it's too small to be a flava. And look right here. That looks almost like a wide broadleaf mondo grass grown there. I'm not sure if it is or not, it just looks like it. But let's show you the profile of this. Um, usually the Saracenia rubras, the hoods, the hoods tend to be more hooded. So that's what's making me confused about these. But anyway. So guess what Greg just found growing in the moss? Let us zero in on it. More Drosera intermedia. Gore. And look at there, another Drosera intermedia, and you continue this little area, which may be a tire, drill the channel, and you have a lot. Even down there you have some. So yeah, there's tons of Drosera intermedia in this area, and a few pitchers, and also lots of nice, fresh, healthy sphagnum moss. It is just an amazingly beautiful day to be out here. I love the spring, my favorite uh, season with all the colors, unlike the fall where everything is just red and dying. But here is a nice uh, example of a rubra. We have a second picture growing. Too bad these are too young to start blossoming because they have cool flowers. And then you can see all the fresh sphagnum down there. Let me zoom in there and here. I don't see any sundews in the spot, but I could be stepping all over them for all I know. This is a nice, very happy and healthy sphagnum moss as well. And then you can see some aquatic plants down there. There's one growing and a little there. I think those might be parrot's feather, but I'm not sure. And then the bigger ones are the kebamba that's all covered in sediment. And there's some other aquatic plants. But yeah, this is a beautiful Saracenia rubra. And I'm glad I pronounced it correctly this time. Nice clouds. So as we stop to take selfies with this beautiful rubra, Greg noticed right behind us another small example. Let's get in focus. <laughs> This way is better. Nope. Out. There we go. Okay, 
so looking at the water's edge, you can see this aquatic plant there that's with the broad leaves, and you have it here growing immersed. If I recollect from my aquarium keeping days, I wonder if that is Ludwigia of some sort. It is a windy day. That bug is just trying to hold on to this really nifty looking flower. I was looking for butterworts and found this flower, but I don't think they're in bloom this time of year. Around here they bloom in February, and this is right along the water's edge, which is not a good location for butterworts. But right along the water's edge, you can see more the red stem, just the serotonin media. This might be Oxpen Lake number two. We found it from a side road that went there. And you hear all this flowing water because there's a stream coming out of the lake. And continuing all the way down. Check out that channel it carved. So, so it seems like prime pitcher plant territory, but I can't find any. But if you look here, you can see the beautiful field, the car, the flower that Greg saw. He's been into all these little purple flowers. If you can see it right there, like right there. And there are tons of flowers, juncus, and all these yellow ones. And guess what's up there? Exactly. That is Oxpen Lake number one. Ooh, this ground is not very smooth. Isn't that such a beautiful field of flowers? The North American minnow just chilling there, not even minding me. There was a larger variety of fish in the water, but this area, um, it has a lot of like star moss growing in the water or near the water. And check out that aquatic plant that's unusual right there. But I do not see sphagnum at the moment with the star moss. But, okay, the fish uh, disappeared. I thought it was just not minding me. We had to pull over on the Oxpen branch going towards Honkers Lake because we saw something really, really interesting on the side of the road. And you see that there? Prickly pear in the wild. I didn't even know they're native to South uh, Carolina. But look at it. They did a burn and you can even smell the recent burn, yet the prickly pear is still alive. And you have these beautiful flowers that are out of focus. And you can see the little pears. I don't know if this is the kind that produces large fruit that you can eat or if it's just the more ornamental kind. But it's in this burned area. You can see a little air. Whoops. You can see where they missed a few spots with green grass. That's, um, they did a light burn. You can see a lot of prickly pears. So that's interesting that it actually grows down here. For some reason, I thought they'd be more towards like Arizona. But, you know, prickly pear is native to the Americas. I just didn't realize they were native to the East Coast. Here's a close up of the flower, and let's show you even better detail. Right there, check that out. And then here's another flower. There's the dead one that looks like a rose. Here's a close up of some of the um, flowers, too, more of them. And some of the details there of the little dead ones. So here is Honkers Lake. Uh, 
but I want to show you guys something really interesting. You can see over here, let me zoom in, where did it go? Right there. You can see some lily pad flowers that are still opening up but not fully in bloom. As you can see where the tire tracks are, there isn't any burning but just to the side and it's very superficial. So clearly this burning is just a very light burning to kill the top of the grasses. Here we have Pool J. You can see a little bit smoke uh, over there where they've been like, I guess, residue of controlled burn. And you can see down here a birdhouse. You can see where you can park the car for the cor at the corner of Honkers Lake. Look, turtles! Check out this beautiful piece of juncus along the lake with all the blooming lily pads and tons down here. But also, look down there. There is a brim in the water right near that pipe. I'm walking over to Oxpen 3. So wow, there's a little creek and a little area to cross over but it's not uh, seepage water, it's flowing water. So, oh, there is no area that's um, come over, so I don't see any pictures around here. But it would be nice to cross and get right to the lake, wouldn't it? But you can see there's like a stream there. You can see another dip here. We could have gone down the road that came from the other side, but let's find a place to cross, shall we? And they did score so I can step on this wood to make me get even closer. Yay! Now we can check out the Oxpen Lake 3. We still have more lilies here too. There. That's a nice flower. I like the pink at the bottom and the white. It's a nice, fresh, crisp one. I don't see any uh, sphagnum moss yet doesn't mean there is because when I was at Oxpen 2, right after I mentioned I didn't see any, I saw, noticed that there were some to the right after I found. Oh. Yeah. Like, oh, wow, look at all this flooded area. It doesn't look like it's been that way long enough to grow. Oh no, it's just high water level, so we're going to walk around. Careful. It's wet. It's wet over there. Yeah, it's sweat. Um, you get it sweat. Uh, anyway, just what you do is you... No, that's not going to work. Okay. It's going to be wet all the way down. It's oh, it's flowing down. Oh, look at those... Uh, blackberry flowers. Or are these black raspberries? I have no clue. And then we have a little uh, seepage bog there. Or no, uh, just runoff uh, swamp. Okay, so going around to the other side is a no-go, I guess, from here, unless we drive around, which I don't think we will. But no uh, carnies in this area from what I see. Doesn't look like it.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on my excursion to the Carolina Sandhills National Wildlife Refuge and enjoyed the interesting uh, pitcher plants and sundews. And thanks for watching and happy planting.